Okay, here we are. Thermal regulation 6. And I have subtitled this management techniques. Or in other words, what pet owners can do, their techniques or their methods to keep our wonderful pets from being cold stressed or heat stressed. And there's so many things we can talk about. Of course, we're not going to talk about all of them. But I brought here a picture that I took during one of my classes. These students, believe it or not, were taking a test. <laughs> and this guy, I think his name was Sam. He had been rescued by this student. And you can see he's got a little flea bite dermatitis going on. If you look at her left hand, that skin there is on the dog now I'm talking about. The skin is kind of thin, but he was very loved after he was rescued. Now, a big thing with our pets is ideally you would give them choices of where to lay, where to spend their day or their night because we don't know exactly what's going on with our pets. And I've got this image here, and this is kind of an interesting story. Yes, it's a dog <laughs> laying next to a full-fledged pig. The back story is the people that got this pig thought it was a miniature pig. It ended up being a very domestic pig. But they grew attached to it. So it was part of the family. And look at it. It chose to sleep on this bedded area. And the dog was, looks like, okay, I'll share my bed with you. Yeah, so very interesting. But a free choice thing. If the pig was too hot, it would have been on that wood floor. So yes, totally free choice. Look at these guys here. These three animals, of course, one baby and two dogs. The baby is very comfortable laying on the carpeted floor, leaning against the mastiff, I'm going to say. The other dog here, the smaller dog, is like, okay, I'm going to be here. I'm fine. We're all fine. And everybody's in their thermal neutral zone, at least now. And then, of course, I can't help but displaying my dog, Onyx. He loved being around people, and after this, we'd run through a fountain on campus, and we'd get, he would get totally soaked and cool off that way because he would get a little warm in the summer months. So now I'm going to show you some dog houses that I think are fabulous. And we're talking about, you know, what we can do for our pets. So here's a golden retriever, it looks like. I want to point out the air conditioner, the dog in the doorway, and it's got one of these plastic type doors where, where it's plastic strips, and then you can walk through it and the dog is half in, half out. And it's selecting its environment. Here's another one of those homes, dog houses, I pr probably should say. You can kind of see over here where the laser pointer is. I really like these doors because then they keep the cool air in the dog house. And if a dog is trained for this, 
It could walk through the door and self-select. Does it want to be outside, inside, halfway in, halfway out? Okay, so we're always about self-selection. And of course, it depends on the dog breed. Here is Monique, the dog I have had in the past. Great Pyrenees, Pyrenees Mountain Dog. This beautiful little girl was fascinated with Monique, and I told this little girl's parents that that little girl was in the safest place she could be because Monique loved kids. Monique was laying on the bricks trying to thermoregulate. Okay. And then, of course, we've had other dogs like Newfoundlands that loved to swim. And no matter how hot it got, they would love to swim, and that's how they thermoregulated. So here's Onyx and Bella swimming in a pretty cool river. Now, one thing you should realize is that after a dog or any pet, dog, horse, cat, whatever, after they eat a meal, there's always some heat generated. And in this slide, it's called dietary thermogenesis. And if you look at that word, thermo means heat and genesis means production. So it's basically after an animal eats, there's heat produced in the body. And sometimes it's called specific dynamic activity. And the reason I included this diagram illustration is that proteins give more heat off while they're digested than carbohydrates, than lipids. Lipids are the easily digested, most easily digested material. It ends up being maybe three hours is the max for these things. So the key is if you're feeding an animal, a pet, you shouldn't feed them where it's going to be going into the hottest part of the day. So like, you know, if it's going to be hot during the afternoon, you wouldn't feed them at noon because at 3 o'clock they're producing a lot of heat. So I've used that myself. Late at night, if I know I have a dog that's outside in the elements, I'll feed them as late as I can because I know that they'll, their body will be producing heat about three hours later and that might get them through the night better than if I didn't feed them late. Now I want to show you some more dog houses because it was fascinating when I was searching for dog houses how many I saw that I was not familiar with. Now this one, I'm going to enlarge it, is a dog house that for a dog that loves to dig in the ground and tries to get below surface, it might be a great uh, solution for you. The dog is in this dog house, I'll call it. But if you look down here, a lot of it's below, below ground level. So that's fascinating to me. And then here's one. This person installed this for a dog. You have this much showing. Of course, it's going to be below the ground that you can't see. And he stated that his dog always tried to dig in the ground and made a lot of holes in the yard. And then since he installed this type of dog house, the dog has never made a hole in the ground again. Now remember, we're trying to say, hey, try to give your dog a lot of options for where they sleep, where they live. And I love this one. I wish I had this one when I was a kid. Look at this picture. Here is somebody sleeping, but their dog has a separate bed 
and it's got steps leading to this bed. That is phenomenal. That's amazing right there. And you can build that by yourself for a pretty low cost. Looks pretty good. Now, if you're famous, and I guess rich maybe, rich and famous, you're going to have a very fancy doghouse in the backyard. There's what it looks like on the outside. Here's what it looks like inside. The dog is pretty small, but it's got two levels, different surfaces to sleep on. And I'm sure the dog is quite happy, especially if there's more than one. Okay, I can't ignore cats. And of course, you know how cats love <laughs> to crawl into boxes. I mean, boxes and suitcases and all that. That's got to be what's called a, you know, a fixed action pattern. They love to fit into boxes, no matter what time, what type of cat we're talking about. And so cats can be given different homes. Look at this one. Different levels. Different things going on. The lower level has some food or water bowls at least and nothing else going on. The second level has some holes. And the third level has a hole. So, amazing makes the cats happy. So here's the illustrations I use and the bottom line is can you give your pets, dogs, cats, horses, a variety of environments that, that they can choose to select. Okay, thanks a lot.